Hello, now I'm at the sewing machine and I'm going to just show you how quickly these peg bags can be made. So measurement from the, the side for the seam is I always just put the side of the sewing machine foot onto the edge of the fabric and we'll just sew all the way around. And we leave that little opening at the bottom of the peg bag so we can turn this through. very quick and simple easy make to do and making it with two fabrics makes it really really strong so we're just gently curving round where we measured our coat hanger or we'll coming to the tricky bit where we drew round the top I'll just reduce the speed a little bit just to help get the curve nice and perfect taking it down the other shoulder now. I've just got this in orange thread so you'll be able to see the places that you need to stitch. Okay. So turning along the bottom there. Now we need to leave that little gap. I just want to do one more stitch. We need to make that little gap at the bottom. So I'm almost up to the pin. The pin cushion is over there. So that's that one completed. So that's the back of the peg bag all stitched. So you can see I've gone all the way around and I've left open that little piece at the bottom for where we're going to turn the bag through from. So I'll just sew the other part of the bag, which is the front. Put that one down. Starting at the bottom, again, where we've got the pin. And we're going to sew all the way around the edge. I have to put my pin cushion in a much handier place. There we go. So I'll have sewn again. point there so we're going to come down the front of the peg bag See how simple this is to actually stitch having the side of the foot following the edge of the fabric so okay we're coming up to the stopping point now so that's that side done as well so if we remove our pins now the peg bag has to be turned through but before we turn the peg bag through we want to do some li some little bits of trimming. I hope you can see this. Just get a little pair of scissors out of here. So where you've got the two points on the top of the peg bag, where you've got your your circle for the opening, uh, cut straight across the point at the top there, and in the curve, I want you to put some little snips so be careful when you're doing this because you don't want to go into your stitches that you've just put in 
but snip all the way around and when this is pressed you'll have a nice smooth curve now if it's a tight curve you can take little triangles the fabric away so you don't have a thickness coming on round the curve but I've always found with such an narrow seam allowance it, it actually doesn't need it so across the bottom again cut straight across the corners so that's all the trimming that you need to be doing on the front part of the peg bag and I've got to carry on and do exactly the same on the corners of this bag the bag sorry the the back of the peg bag and do some snips as well anywhere where you've got a curve do some snips because it when it's pressed as I said before it does iron out loads nice okay. and then trim across the corner and trim across the bottom corner on there so we'll remove them pegs and then both of these now can be turned through to the other side So I'm going to be using the gingham part of the bag and I want the fox fabric on the inside. So when we put this together we've got to bear in mind which side is going where. It is always a good idea to actually press this as well before you, you put the two parts of the bag together. So that one's turned through we'll get that pressed and just make sure that you get that nice curve at the top of the bag so you've got a, a reasonably nice curve at the top and down the edges there and this one will be turned through too I'm just going to have to pretend I've pressed this peg bag for this video. Now if you get stuck on any of your corners you can always take a pin and sharpen up the point by just teasing out the fabric. sharper right so like I said I want to have the gingham side as my right side to be able to see the fox fabric when I actually open the peg bag and just tidy up these edges before we start the saw. So when my peg bag's finished I want it to look like that. So that means this piece now has to be stitched with right sides together so that's gingham in my case gingham to gingham so this needs to be pinned all the way around and if you keep your pins away from the edge when you're sewing then you won't have to move them the whole time you, you make this peg bag up I must get rid of that blunt pin so if you match all your corners up ideally this should be nice and pressed but it's just for this video I'm just going to be 
pinning it just to show you where you're going to be stitching. Trying to roll back the fabric on the edges as well. So just make sure your corners are as tidy as you can get them. So what you're sewing now is through four layers of fabric. So you can now increase your stitch length that little bit more. Now I'm just going to pin this side and then I'm going to show you the how to seal up the bottom of the bag. In this bag with it being four layers of fabric, well two layers for each side, it'll really it'll last a long time and won't look flimsy on the washing line either. And it'll take the weight of your pegs. And then we're just going to be sewing up to that shoulder point there. Okay, so the bottom here where we've got the two openings, we need to fold them in just a, a centimetre, just really the the distance that we sewed the seam along. And if you were to press this before you put the two pieces together, you can always press this seam in and it is helpful when you actually come to sort at the finished. So I'm just, for quickness, I'm just folding this in and just giving it a quick crease with my nail. Okay, so now you're going to put the whole thing together and stitch it round from shoulder to shoulder. So I'll put that pin right through. So I'm just going to increase my stitch length now. I'm just going to take it up to three. And we're going to start at one shoulder and we're going to sew all the way around. Just make that nice and sharp. So what you've got is something like that. Okay, so I'm just going to bring the machine forward. So starting at the shoulder, I hope you can see this, I'm just trying to turn the machine instead of the tripod okay so again I'm, all I'm doing I'm just keeping the forward and back stitch there I'm just keeping the side of the machine foot running round the side of the fabric I'm just making a nice turn so all the edges once this is turned through all the edges I'll be, um, there'll be no raw seams on the inside because it's a little bit like a French seam where everything's enclosed. Removing the pins as I go. Should pop them a little bit further back. So this time we're coming straight across the bottom of the bag and we will be closing up those two gaps we left when we turn the bag through. And if this was pressed it would have been a lot easier and I hope if when you do it you're going to press yours. Just with those seams not being stitched or pressed it just makes it a little bit tricky. Up to the following corner 
everything's moved a fraction so that won't alter the bag. More stitch. So now we're coming up the side of the bag. I'm just going to edge the top of the bag so I'm going to take the machine now secure this at the shoulder here just a little forward and back stitch and then I'm just going to finish off the top with a little bit of a top stitch all the way around the top go a little bit slow when you do the, the tight curve there and then joining up to where we first started. And I'm just gonna come over that little bit, lifting the toe of the foot just till I get up there, that's it. And then a little bit forward and back stitch there. I just want to check that I've actually hit that seam I have. Because it did move when I was taking the pins out. So what we've got now is a completely stitched round peg bag. Any loose threads, just remove them. Now the next thing is to put the ribbon on the neck. Now I just need to go and get the coat hanger, which I've got on the table. We need some ribbon. So I'm just going to turn the back through now. Now your corners will be bulky so that they will be very rounded because what we've got is um, a concentrated layers of fabric. So I wouldn't worry too much about them. The main thing is with that we've we've stitched the, the bottom of the bag where we had those gaps. And again you can always get a pin and I've left a one in. There we go. I couldn't get that turned. You can always get a pin and you can Pull out the fabric just to smooth it off a little bit more. That one's okay. So the top of the peg bag's there. Little shoulder. So that's what I wanted to achieve. So we wanted I wanted the foxes on the inside of the bag. So we've got to find the centre point of this curve. Which is there. And just pop a little pin in just to make sure you don't lose the place. Okay. And then we want to put our hanger inside. And this is just a children's hanger. Okay, and you can see that because we drew round it with the pattern, it fits very nicely on the top of the hanger but what we want to do is to keep the hanger in place we're going to put a little bit of ribbon in there so where I've got the pin I'm going to take this hanger away cut a length of ribbon probably um, how much I'm just guessing and everything so mm, about a half a metre actually, that's about half a metre. We can always trim it down when we, uh, when we stitch it, if we think it's too long when we put the hanger on. Now you want it face down, 
So find the centre point of the ribbon and then place it face down on the peg bag. Because when it comes round you're going to see the outside of it when you tie it. Pop another pin in there. So if you stitch this in place now, just a few stitches and I've got I mean, ideally, I, I really should have had cream thread on here, but I just wanted to show you the stitching lines. So you are going to see some orange thread once I've stitched this in. But please be sure to use it a nice colour and it, make, it gives you a nice tidy finish. So all I've done is a little bit forward and back. Just a few rows of stitching. threads, pop your little hanger in and move everything back, you'll be able to see this and then just tie it in a nice bow. So you can easily take it, if your peg bag needs to go through the washing machine, you can easily take it out, your hanger out. It's always difficult to try and get one the right side of the ribbon in so so there you go so that's the little gingham peg bag that I'd planned to make today with the two pieces of fabric that I brought around from the shop I hope you like it and I hope you have a go because we'll all need to be hanging our washing out and get some sunshine thank you bye bye